in this episode, let us study the most neglected objective. And all you gotta do is to keep on watching. What's up guys? This is Trinil and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we talk about adept ranking, lesson plan tutorials, and other teacher-related stuff. So for this episode, we will talk about how to write your effective objective. Pero wait, bago tayo mag-start, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there at hit the notification bell para maging updated kayo sa lahat ng mga bagong videos ko every single week. Before tayo mag-start, sa last episode, we did a self-reflection. And let's discuss this first to give clarifications and answers to some of your questions. So the only thing that you have to remember is you will identify the level of cognitive learning by looking at the curriculum guide. Kasi kung ang lesson ay CG-based, ibig sabihin predetermined na kung saan level dapat ilagay ang bawat learning competency kasi meron na silang mga action words na nakalagay. And in order for us to understand this, let us have an example. So, let us have a learning competency from English for Grade 2, which is Recognize Simple Sentences. At kung nakikita nyo, CG-based na ito kasi meron na siyang code na nakalagay. Tapos, meron na siyang action word. So, the only thing that you have to do is to look for the action word. Tapos, hanapin nyo yung mga similar words na pwedeng gamitin instead of that action word. Tapos, i-check nyo kung Saang level kaya bilong ang action word sa Bloom's Taxonomy? Kung lower order ba siya muna or higher order? Or kung mas mabilis kayo mag-identify, i-determine nyo na kung siya ba ibilong sa remembering, sa understanding, sa applying, sa analyzing, sa evaluation, or sa creation. And let us now proceed to the next episode. Welcome sa second episode ng ating summer lesson plan tutorial. So for today's episode, pag-uusapan naman natin kung paano ba sumulat ng tamang effective objectives. The effective domain was designed and proposed by David Grathwall, who was a former student of Dr. Benjamin Bloom at siya naman ang gumawa ng Bloom's Taxonomy of Objectives na ginagamit natin sa pagsulat ng ating cognitive objectives. The effective domain includes the way we deal with things emotionally such as feelings, values, appreciation, enthusiasms, motivations, and attitudes. Ngayon, bakit kaya kailangan nating magsulat at mag-insert ng mga effective objectives sa ating lesson plan? Kailangan nating magsulat at mag-insert ng effective objectives sa bawat lesson plan, it's because once we learn something, hindi lang naman mind ang may natututunan. The new learnings could affect somebody's beliefs, prior knowledge, and values. And in order to have a successful learning, the learner should receive it open-mindedly. And through that, the new learning can change the learner. And according to David Grathwell, we have five major categories of the effective domain. Ibig sabihin nito, meron tayong iba't ibang mga paraan upang mabago ang attitude or ang behavior ng isang learner through the learning competence. Competency. These categories are arranged from simple to the most complex behavior at mag-uumpisa tayo sa receiving, responding, valuing, organizing, and internalization. Let's discuss the different functions of the major categories for the effective domain and let us start with the receiving phenomena. Sa receiving phenomena natin makikita ang awareness ng isang learner upang pakinggan or magbigay ng attention sa isang learning competency na maaaring magbago ng kanilang behavior or attitude. Under the receiving phenomena, once na mapakinggan ng isang learner or magbigay siya ng attention sa isang learning competency, magpa-follow pa lang siya at gagawin niya ang required response para sa bawat learning competency. For example, if you teach good manners, salimbawa ito ay ESP subject and you teach them how to greet and respect the elderly, saying courteous expressions and etc., the immediate learning outcome would be the learners will do what you teach. Take note, under the receiving phenomena, the learners will just follow what you require them to do. Wala pang reactions dito. Ibig sabihin, susunod pa lang sila sa kung ano yung ine-expect mong gagawin nila for the learning competency. And the action words to be used for the effective objective under the receiving phenomena are as follows. The second category for the effective domain is the responding phenomena and it requires active participation of the learners and reacts to a particular situation. For example, if our learning competency is paghihimagsik ng katipunan which is from AP ng grade 6, pwede natin gamitin ng effective objective na natatalakay ang mga dahilan ng paghihimagsik. Now, this will give the learners an opportunity to examine the phenomena which is yung paghihimagsik. Now, through this effective objective, this will provide an opportunity for a learning outcome na based sa response ng mga learners. Pero wala pa namang observable changes sa kanilang behavior or sa kanilang attitude towards the learning competency. 
Ibig sabihin, sa receiving phenomena, the learners will just follow what you require them to do. Pagdating naman sa responding phenomena, they will react and they will discuss the learning competency in order for them to know the value of the learning competency. And in order for us to use the responding phenomena in creating our own effective objectives, here are the action words suggested. Now, the third major category for the effective domain is valuing and this involves the value a learner attaches to a particular phenomenon. Sa Tagalog, ang valuing, dito natin makikita ang pagpapahalaga or pagbibigay ng importansya ng isang mag-aaral tungkol sa isang sitwasyon o pangyayari. Pwede din natin dito makita kung paano ba pinapahalagahan ng isang mag-aaral ang mga itinuturo sa kanya. Dito yun makikita sa valuing category. The valuing phenomena could be seen from the simplest acceptance to the most complex state of commitment depende sa kung ano ang degree ng pagpapahalaga ng isang learner tungkol sa isang learning competency. Even though nakikita na natin ang pagpapahalaga ng isang bata tungkol sa isang learning competency, the behavior is still based sa phenomena being discussed. For example, if we have a learning competency na nakapagpapakita ng paggalang sa dayuhan sa pamamagitan ng mabuting pagtanggap o pagtrato sa mga katutubo at dayuhan which is from ESV grade 5, a simple learning outcome under the valuing phenomena is that the learner can demonstrate respect to the IPs and foreigners. Nasasabi natin under ito ng valuing phenomena because once a learner values what was taught to him or her, pwede niya itong i-practice or i-demonstrate niya ito sa kanyang daily life. Or a more complex learning outcome under the valuing phenomena is to make projects for social improvement such as creating welcome programs or creating a welcome committee in order for them to accommodate specific type of people such as the IPs and the foreigners. Now, even though nakakapag-generate na sila ng ganitong learning outcome, the learner's behavior is still dependent sa topic being discussed. Ngayon, tandaan natin na sa valuing phenomena, na ipapakita ng isang learner ang pagpapahalaga niya sa isang particular type of lesson. Ngayon, kung magpapresent tayo ng isa pang lesson na different sa lesson na binigyan niya ng pagpapahalaga, may chance ang magproduce siya ng undesirable response as a learning outcome. Because under the valuing phenomena, nakakapagproduce lang tayo ng magandang learning outcome kung bibigyan ng pagpapahalaga ng learner ang isang lesson at nakakapagproduce naman tayo ng hindi magandang learning outcome kung walang pagpapahalaga ang learner sa isang lesson. And the action words to be used under the valuing phenomena are as follows. The fourth major category for the effective domain is organization and the learner organizes values into priorities by contrasting different values, resolving conflicts between them, and creating a unique value system. Kung natatandaan nyo kanina, under the valuing phenomena, isang particular type ng lesson lamang ang binibigyan ng pagpapahalaga ng isang learner. Now, kapag pinersent sa kanya ang ibang lesson na different sa binigyan niya ng pagpapahalaga, nagproproduce siya ng undesirable response as a learning outcome. Now, once a learner undergoes the organization category, titimbangin na niya ngayon ang magkaibang mga values at iisipin na niya kung sinong mas uunahin niyang sundin and thus creating a unique value system. Now, in order for a learner to undergo the organization category, the learning outcome should focus on comparing, relating, and synthesizing values. Ibig sabihin, kailangan magtimbang ang learner ng dalawang contrasting values at iisipin niya kung sinong mas uunahin niyang susundin. For example, if the learning competence Competency is identifying the rights of a child. Siyempre, dapat the learner should also recognize the duties aligned with the rights. Kasi nga, hindi dapat lang ang mga karapatan ng bata ang kanyang ini-enjoy. Kailangan niya ding malaman ang iba't iba mga tungkuling kaakibat ng bawat karapatan kanyang tinatamasa. For example, kung ituturo natin sa isang grade 2 pupil ang kanyang karapatan para maglaro, dapat ang kaakibat nito ay eh malaman niya din ang tamang oras sa paglalaro at magbigay pa siya ng iba pang oras para makagawa ng kanyang mga gawain sa bahay. Now, through this, magbibigay tayo ng opportunity sa learners na timbangin ang dalawang lessons na ipresent sa kanya. Yung karapatan niya maglaro at kung kailan siya dapat maglaro sa tamang oras. Ngayon titimbangin niya kung sino dun sa dalawang values ang uunahin niyang i-prioritize. And to create an effective objective under the organization category, here are the action words presented. And the last major category for the effective domain and also the most complex is the internalization or characterization of values. Now, under this new category, the learner has a value system that controls the behavior for every phenomena. Ngayon, kaya nagkaroon ng value system ang isang learner, it's because sa previous category ng effective domain, natimbang na niya ang dalawang contrasting values at iniisip na niya kung sino mga 
values ang ipaprioritize niya at once nalaman na niya ang ipaprioritize niyang values, nababago ngayon ang kanyang response or ang kanyang behavior in every different situation. And under the internalization category, the behavior or the learning outcome of the learner is always consistent kasi nga meron na siyang sinusundang value system. For example, if a learner values people for a certain characteristic such as yung kanyang muka, yung kanyang talino o yung kanyang kapangyarihan, pwede pa rin niyang mabago ang kanyang behavior depende sa kung ano yung matutunan niyang panibagong lesson and kung mapapractice niya ba ito consistently. Now, dito sa internalization category, dito nakikita yung transformative learning. Makikita natin kung titimbangin ba niya ang dalawang contrasting values tapos magka-create ba siya ng panibagong value system at magbabago na ang kanyang mga learning outcomes or ang kanyang behavior depende sa iba't ibang mga situations. And here are the action words to be used in order for us to create an effective objective under the internalization category. And let us go back. We have five major categories for the effective domain and let's start with receiving, responding, valuing, organization, and characterization at meron silang iba't ibang mga degrees and functions sa affective domain. And let's proceed to an exercise. Ang gagawin nyo is you have to identify the correct category manifested by each learner. Basahin nyo mabuti ang bawat situations at i-examine nyo kung anong category ang ipinapakita ng isang learner under the affective domain. And you can choose from receiving, responding, valuing, organizing, and internalization. Good luck! Now it's time for us to know when to use the correct category for an effective objective. We have three different factors that we have to consider in choosing the perfect category for an effective objective. And the first factor is it will always depend on you as a teacher. The second factor is kung ano ba yung values integrated sa isang lesson. And the third factor is kung ano yung degree ng change na gusto mo bang iparanas or ipa-experience sa bawat learner. But as much as possible, we have to motivate learners to internalize new learnings for transformative learning. Hindi basta-basta dapat magko-comply lang ang learners para makasunod sila sa learning competency. Dapat ma-internalize nila ang mga bagong itinuturo sa kanila. Still, nasa'yo pa rin ang decision as a teacher kung gusto mo bang mag-follow lang sila sa'yo. Kung gusto mo mag-discuss sila ng mga values, kung meron ba silang dapat bigyan ng pagpapahalaga na isang particular type of value lamang, kung meron ba silang dapat i-compare na contrasting values, or kailangan may internalize ba sila in order for them to have a transformative learning. And now let us proceed to know what effective objective to be used. Kasi not all the time na ipepresent ng learning competency ang effective objective na aligned para sa kanya. In creating our effective objectives, we have two options. The first option is dapat yung effective objective ay related sa cognitive objective. And the second option is kung siya ay related sa values integrated sa isang lesson. Sa first option, related or dependent ang effective objective sa cognitive objective na ginawa para sa lesson plan. For example, kung ang ating cognitive objective is to identify polite gestures to elderly, ang ating effective objective is to display ways to show politeness. Kung mapapansin nyo, related yung effective objective sa kung ano yung kinreate na cognitive objective. Yun yung first option. Sa second option, kung ang ating learning competency is to solve two-step word problems involving addition and subtraction, mahirapan tayong gumawa ng effective objective kasi parang wala namang makikitang values na meron sa mismong learning competency. Makakagawa lang tayo ng effective objective kung mag-i-integrate tayo ng panibagong value. And let's say, ang values integrated dito is perseverance in doing challenges. So, through the values integrated, 
pwede natin gawing effective objective yung performs activities with perseverance. Tatandaan lang natin na maaari tayong makagawa ng effective objective kung siya ay related sa cognitive objective or related siya sa values integration sa isang lesson plan. And now, let us proceed to our home activity for this episode. Now, for this episode, I will give you two learning competencies only. Ang gagawin nyo ay magsusulat kayo ng isa lang na effective objective para sa bawat learning competency and in a brief paragraph, state nyo kung anong category belong ang inyong effective objective kung siya ba ay under ng receiving, responding, valuing, organization, or internalization. And explain nyo kung bakit nyo siya doon nilagay sa category na yon. And as soon as you are finished watching this episode, ang answer sheet natin for this episode ay nakalagay na or nakapost na sa ating Facebook group. At naririto na ang ating mga learners who submitted their answers for the last episode. <laughs> And now, for this episode's self-reflection, ilagay nyo nga sa comment section sa baba what information you remembered the most. At para sa lahat ng mga videos ko tungkol sa DepEd Ranking, lesson plan tutorials, and other teacher-related stuff, iiwan ko ang lahat ng link dito sa description box. Once again, this is Trineal. Thank you so much for watching. And the next episode para sa ating summer lesson plan tutorial series ay magaganap sa March 31. Bye, guys!